Welcome everyone. Uh, today in my presentation I'm going to talk about NOAA strategies in advanced interventional cardiology and vascular treatment. My name is Reika Iramberger, I'm a full-time PhD student and my vision is to improve patient care in Hungary and worldwide through evidence-based innovative healthcare solutions and my mission is to provide forward-looking and NOAA scientific results in coronary artery and vascular treatment. Uh, these are my specific goals I want to talk about today. Uh, so these uh, three projects are my ongoing ones. The first one is uh, based on the methodology of systematic review and meta-analysis, investigating the effectiveness of treatment modalities for calcified coronary lesions. Calcified coronary diseases are also called end-stage coronary diseases and their prevalence is reported between 18 and 26% in the latest registries. The calcification in the coronary plug can clearly define the adverse event and the overall uh, mortality rates. And uh, because of the uh, resistant plug burden, the calcified coronary lesions require additional treatment modalities, so-called plug modification techniques. We have multiple options there, but we don't know which is the best because the guidelines are unclear. So our aim was to examine the effectiveness of the treatment method of calcified coronary arteries. So in this project, we um, compared the rotational tractomy device combined with either the dedicated devices, which are basically uh, the modified balloons like the cutting and the scoring balloon, or combined with the workhorse devices, which are um, the plain balloon techniques, by the analysis of efficacy and safety outcomes. Our primary outcome was the composite outcome MACE, major adverse cardiovascular events, including uh, recurrent acute coronary syndrome, repeated revascularization, instant restenosis, stent thrombosis, and uh, overall mortality rates. Our safety outcome included slow flow, no reflow, and coronary perforation rates as, uh, uh, as a, a complication of the procedure. So this is our flowchart of selection. We searched in three databases and we ended up with eight eligible articles. This is the baseline characteristics table from our manuscript. I just wanted to highlight that we have two RCTs. The others are observational studies, mostly ret retrospective ones. And uh, also we had two articles dealing with the scoring balloon as modified balloon type. The rest of the studies dealt with the cutting balloon. So moving forward for the results, uh, this is the result from our analysis of the primary outcome of uh, MACE. We use the effect measure of odds ratio and uh, this is the result we are ended up with. So what we can really see that uh, the overall adverse event rate were almost half as much in case of the modified balloon group than in the plain balloon group and uh, it's clinically really important. On the right hand side you can see the risk of bias assessment and uh, the certainty of evidence assessment results. Uh, the downgrading of evidence was due to the fact that um, we had a relatively low number of events and uh, heterogeneity, heterogeneity was quite high in this case. So we did some exploratory analysis uh, for the source of heterogeneity. Uh, and uh, on the right hand side on the Boja plot you can see that we had uh, an outlier study. So we decided to have a separate analysis excluding this study. And uh, with this uh, result we can say that uh, our hypothesis is not just clinically but mathematically supported as well. Also, the main source of heterogeneity was uh, uh, due to the biological fact that some of the studies uh, included not just severe but moderate cases as well. So we decided to have a, a subgroup analysis including only those studies that examined uh, the severely calcified coronary cases. And uh, as you can see, uh, the true benefit from the modified balloon types uh, um, can seen in this patient population. Uh, also, as I mentioned, we had uh, two safety outcomes for uh, uh, procedural complications, slow flow, no reflow, and coronary perforation. And uh, although um, the modified balloon types um, are considered as uh, more uh, aggressive treatment methods, uh, there were no differences between the, um, uh, the complication rates and the safety outcomes. So, um, 
patients and um, especially those who are treated with the severely calcified cases uh, can benefit from the combined treatment of uh, rotational atrectomy and modified balloon types. We showed uh, its safety and uh, efficacy. Also, uh, we wanted to highlight that um, um, we need more objective evaluation of lesion characteristics and uh, we need standardization of calcification evaluation, mostly with the uh, method of uh, intravascular uh, imaging techniques. This is our status uh, of uh, the manuscript. So we are preparing, the, preparing everything and formatting the manuscript for our target journal, which is the circulation cardiovascular interventions. Moving forward for my second project, which is planned to be an RCT, comparison of compression and non-compression based devices in hemostasis of brachial artery. Brachial artery serves an alternative puncture point in interventional cardiology when uh, the radial artery isn't available for us to puncture. We have a lot of hemostasis devices that can be used, uh, compression and non-compression based ones. Um, from the latter, the most frequently used ones in our cat lab is the ketazone based one. Also, I want to highlight that uh, there is a quite high uh, adverse event rate that can be encountered in case of an art arterial, uh, alternative arterial approach. This is the composite outcome of DOCHA, or device-oriented composite endpoint, that can be reduced by the uh, use of non-compression-based non devices. The problem is that there is no evidence regarding um, uh, the hemostasis of brachial artery. So our aim was to investigate the novel non-compression based devices in case of a brachial arterial approach. We will uh, compare the ketazone based hemostasis device to the compression based bandage by the analysis of the aforementioned uh, docha. And uh, also we have a third study, which is a systematic review and meta-analysis, comparing the safety and efficacy of left ventricular unloading strategies for VA ACMO in patients with cardiogenic shock. When it comes to the treatment of cardiogenic shock, VA ACMO is an often used treatment method uh, in the complex care. The problem with the VA ACMO is that it causes a retrograde aortic flow uh, that can lead to insufficient decompression and potentially to uh, pul pulmonary hypertension. Uh, so the in-hospital mortality rates are quite high uh, with the use of VA ECMO even nowadays, but that, that, can, be in can, uh, that can be reduced by the use of uh, um, some specific methods that called uh, LV venting or unloading strategies. We have uh, multiple options there uh, as well, but uh, the consensus is uh, not clear here. So our aim was to compare uh, the safety and efficacy of these unloading methods during VA ECMO treatment. We will compare the Impala to the IABP uh, intra aortic balloon pump by the analysis of uh, several um, safety and efficacy outcomes. So for summary, uh, I've presented you my three ongoing projects, which are for the goal to optimize the treatment and uh, have evidence-based decision-making uh, for the practitioners. I'm confident that my presented and future research can adequately serve this purpose. Thank you for your attention. Congratulations. And we have already heard your presentation, fortunately, thanks to the louder voice. I, I should like to suggest again to you that uh, uh, to enlarge the figures, especially figure three and figure four, because you had enough space and we could not check if the number of uh, patients in different arms were really satisfying because it, and without glass, I could not read it. So uh, shorter sentence, larger tables or larger letters would be a uh, better and not not brownish but black letters to enhance the contrast otherwise clear cut presentation thank you Rika, <clears throat> congratulations at least we have a topic uh, about which i can talk and i can ask questions so uh, so the thing is that um your first uh, your first topic uh when you were comparing the uh uh, the um, um, uh, the uh, several possibilities how we can modify a plaque. So the problem is that you you didn't really convince me uh, what I should or what I shall use in the future. 
Uh, actually, there are several reasons. So this is number one is that I could hardly hear you. Uh, that was that was a problem. Uh, and uh, you had figures, but for me from here, it was really difficult to understand your figures and you were not stating what you found, right? So I didn't really get the point of your first of your first topic. Most likely it was good. Uh, I just I just didn't get it. Maybe it was my fault. So, uh, but the thing is that I'm here, and my responsibility is to evaluate your uh, your your presentation. So I think you got to be concentrate. You got to be concentrate on that. And the second one, please convince me right now to puncture the brachial artery. Please do it. Why should I puncture the brachial artery? Okay, so um, if the radial artery isn't available to puncture, you know, uh, there can be uh, several reasons. Uh, but if a patient comes uh, not just first, but second, third times, that it's really frequent uh, to um, encounter this problem. And uh, for the upper limb, it's, it's more beneficial for the patient. They can leave earlier. Uh, it's it's uh, easier to compress. Um, also, uh, you know, there is another option, the femoral artery. Mm -hmm but it's more uh, complicated um, and Why? Uh, first i think it's it's more um, uh, difficult to puncture Why? You can encounter Why? um it's um, difficult to see or or you have to be an what about an ultrasound puncture? guided puncture which is a guideline sorry ultrasound guided puncture of the femoral artery Okay. which is a guideline. So it's just much easier. The femoral artery is much larger than the brachial artery. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't look at him. So you are the one who need to, uh, need to okay. go into a discussion with me. So I'm just wondering, so please convince me. Okay. Because, are... okay, please. So there are more severe complications. Sorry, I didn't hear you. More severe complications okay. of the femoral arterial um, access and um and also i think it's it's a it's a really great point for us to consider that the patient should um should uh, stay in the hospital if we puncture their uh, femoral artery this is not true sorry this is not true um in our department it's okay the... but if you if you look into the literature and if you look into to the uh, to the practice of other countries they can do, there are countries where the femoral rate is still high and they can do one day surgeries, one day PCIs using the femoral artery. Okay, uh, we, we so The reason why I'm asking that is that according to my current knowledge, the uh, complication rate of brachial artery, puncturing brachial artery is larger than the complication rate of puncturing the femoral artery. So you are, you are planning to convince me to puncture brachial artery instead of femoral if radio is not an option. That's difficult. Yeah, uh, we, we also have a, a recent uh, meta-analysis on this topic, so we can share it with you. Okay. Uh, because uh, they, they found that uh, the brachial artery is uh, more optimal to puncture in case of the radial artery isn't available uh, because of the complication and, uh, and also for the patient's benefit. Okay, congratulations to your discussion skills. Thank you for the presentation. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> so, um, uh, congrats on your progression. My question is regarding to our first project. Um, is there any results about the safety outcomes? Uh, so, uh, either technique is uh, superior or inferior uh, in regard of uh, the damage they can cause, the no-flow time or the uh, uh, damage to the uh, vessels? So there were two dichotomous outcomes that I already showed you. So these were the two that we were uh, examining. Uh, so the slow flow, no reflow rate and the coronary perforations, these are the mo most severe ones that we can encounter um, in this uh, uh, procedure. And uh, there were no non inferior or superior ones. So uh, there were no differences between the two methods. Thank you.